So this video is going to help you with uh, more difficult factoring trinomials where the leading coefficient is not equal to 1. So it won't be something like x squared minus 3x minus 18. With a leading coefficient, we're talking about this number right here. So it's a little bit more difficult factoring. Uh, one thing just before we start, uh, if you just do a Google search um, and then click on videos if you need extra help, make sure you type in guess and check. Uh, you might see some other techniques that are helpful, um, but you have plenty of resources out there for factoring. You don't just have to use this one. Okay, so our technique is kind of similar to before. I'm not going to use uh, the, the box method, the, the table method that was on the last video, but I am going to use that same concept. So you need to pick two numbers that multiply to give you three and get those in there. And it's always going to be 3x and x. That's the only thing you can get when you to multiply those two together. And then numbers that multiply to give me negative 15. So I just write them right here, 5 and 3. And so the reason why I do that is it either has to be 5 and 3 here or 5 and 3 here. And then you can bring down this 3 and 1. And, and we can see, is there a way to come up with 4 using those products. Remember, we're multiplying uh, first outside, inside, last. So we're just looking at the outside and inside. So I, I get 9x if I have them here and 5x here. Nine With 9 and 5, um, I can get a positive 4. So I need, I need the 9 to be positive and the 5 to be negative. So I write those in, 5 and 3, and I put the positive here, so I get a plus 9 and a minus here. I can always multiply it to check to see if it works. Um, but when I'm checking, I usually just look at, again, looking at these inside. That's negative 5. That's positive 9. Okay, going to the second one. Again, I like the ones that you know that you know you have to have 7n and n. And so the other thing is uh, for, for positive 2, I know I only can use 2 and 1. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a 1 here and bring down the 7 and 1. So that's 7 and 1 in. And I'm going to multiply those together and see if I can come up with 9 somehow. So that gives, 2 times 1 is 2, 7 times 1 is 7. That would give me 9. Uh, I need negative 9. So... That means both of these are negative because negative 2 plus negative 7 is negative 9. So when I write my 2 and 1 up here, they're both negative. And something to remember, when this sign is positive, these two signs are always going to be the same. When this sign is negative, these two signs will be opposite. Who put that in there? Okay, uh, next one. Again, there's only one choice, really, for the leading term. That's good. Um, and then 21, I can do 21 and 1 or 7 and 3. I always choose 7 and 3 because the 21 and 1, not likely when you're picking these problems. Um, so let's see here, 7 and 3. Let's just say I did this first. Okay, so I try I bring down my 2 and my 1. So I have 14 and 3. No way with 14 and 3 that I can get 1. So it's called guess and check, right? So on the other ones, I've guessed right, so I haven't had to check. But the 2 and 1 are going to stay the same. Now I'm going to switch the 7 and 3 around. So there is 7, and that is 6. And with 7 and 6, I can come up with 1. I need a positive 7 and a negative 6. So I have my numbers in the right order now. 7 and 3. And so I need the 7 part to be positive. So I need, I need this inside here to be positive, which means the outside is negative. And then double check, 7v minus 6v, yep, 7 times 3. So the whole thing is we're forcing this by picking numbers that multiply to give us the first and last term. 
Okay, let's go on to the next one. Again, starting out with 3x and x. And for 9, I can do 3 times 3 or 9 times 1. I usually would choose 3 times 3. So let's just say, okay, I put a 3 here. 3, bring down this 3 and 1. So that gives me 9 and 3. No way I can come up with 26. And then 26 is pretty big. So no way I can come up with that. So I'm going to go with the. It doesn't matter if I switch the 3 and 3 around. They're going to be the same. I'm going to do 9 and 1. So I bring down my 3 and 1 again. And something to know, no, not, I need a big number. So I, I always put, I always kind of look at that where I write it so I don't have to guess and check quite as much. Okay, so this is kind of what we're looking at right here. So now I have 27 and 1. Well, I need to come up with negative 26. Well, I can do that if the 27 is negative 27 and positive 1. So I got my, I got my numbers now. So negative 27, positive 1 is negative 26. Okay, keep going. More examples. At any point, if you feel like you understand it, you pause and work it out, and then you don't have to listen to me talk about it. You can just check the answer. So 7x and x, I know that's fixed. I'm going to bring down... Uh, eight. I'm going to try 4 and 2. So 4, 2. So that gives me 14 and 4, which I cannot come up with 15 for. So I'm going to try switching around. This is where the guess and check part comes in a little tricky. So I switch, I'm switching the 2 and 4. So that gives me 28 and 2, which is not going to give me 15. So... I know 4 and 2 are out, so I'm going to get rid of those. 7x and x has to be, that's the only combination, so that's not going to change. So I'm going to do 8 and 1. So bring down my 7 and 1. Uh, let's put 8 and 1 like this. 8, that's 7. With 8 and 7, I can get 15. So I got my numbers now. So there's 8 plus 1. So that's 8x plus 7x, there's a little extra mark on there, that's 15x, so it works out, okay, go to the next one, again, pause anytime you feel like you can work it out, at some point you're going to have to practice this, so you want to get good at it, 2p and p, I know that's fixed, 21 has <coughs> 7 and 3, just write them right there. Check out my factors. 6 plus 7 or 7 minus 6. Nope, none of that works. So it's guess and check. So flip the 7 and the 3 around. Remember, we're flipping these around. So now I have 14 and 3. 14 and 3 can definitely give me 11 if the 14 is positive and the 3 is negative. So I got my numbers in the right order. Take them up. As soon as you get them in the right order, you can figure out the signs up there later on. So I want the 14 to be bigger. So I want that to be positive, and I want the 3 to be negative. Now this is a good one because this one has not necessarily uh, one option for the first term. So, I mean, for six, you could either have three and two or six and one. I am gonna say though, when I, my advice is always do the three and two. I might be wrong on this one, I don't remember the answer ahead of time. So I always start out with three X and two X. And then, pick a value for 10, so I should write that there, so put, let's try 5 and 2, so there's 10, 
and 6. Can't come up with 11 using 10 and 6. So I'm going to switch it around, the 2 and the 5. So now I have 15 and 4. 15 and 4 definitely gives me 11. So I'm going to go right up to the top and put my numbers in from my coefficients that I figured out. And then I'll worry about the signs. So I need a negative 11. So that's going to go here and a positive so that's 4, negative 15 plus 4. And then we keep going. Again, my strategy on the more difficult ones is always pick 3x and 2x and then go with your 5 and see if there's only one choice for this. So. So we guess and check. This, this one's going to be miserable. 5 and 1. What? 10 and 3. Not working. 3. So we're going to switch the 5 and 1 around. 15 and 2. Not going to work. So 3 and... I only have one choice for the, is for my 5. So now this is going to... I know this has to be... If this thing is going to factor... This has to be 6 and 1. So let's try 5 times 1 there. So 6 and 1. So 6 and 5, I can definitely come up with 1 because I can make this positive 6 and negative 5. So put my 1 in here. Put my 5 in there. So that's positive, negative. So that's what that's about one of the harder factoring ones you'll get. But you know you have to as long as you follow the same steps every time. Oh, this one does not have a leading coefficient of one, so I can just go back and think about what are my factors of 24. Well, six and four, eight and three, twelve and two. And remember, if this is a plus both these signs are going to have to be negative so is there anything i could come up with a four out of this 24 and one so remember this means prime if you can't factor it uh just a couple couple reminders that in, it, it kind of works itself out if you follow the steps if the last sign of the last term is negative so when you have I'm going to show you one here. When you have a minus 21 here, uh, you're looking for a common, you're looking for a difference. Okay, so these signs are going to be opposite each other. So, opposite signs. If the sign of the last term is positive, they're going to be same signs. And you're, you're kind of looking for a difference here and a sum here for your outside and inside. So when we talk about that, when I make those little marks, those are negative 1 and negative 7 equal negative 8, whereas this one, negative 12 plus negative 14, you're really subtracting because that's how negative numbers work. So there's extra practice on the following slides that you can do. you got plenty of practice on your Canvas and Khan Academy. So pause this and practice. These are all pretty reasonable ones. Pause it. Write them down. Then when you're done working it out, you can check the answers.